Mr. Smith has a history of congestive heart failure. He has also been complaining of general weakness. After taking his physical observations, you have noticed that he has pitting edema on both feet. Which of the following is incorrect? The water pill can be prescribed to manage fluid retention. Lasix can be prescribed for the pitting edema. Furosemide and digoxine can be combined for patients with CHF. Furosemide will increase Mr. Smith's blood pressure and lessen pitting edema. Q2, Annie, one of the residents in the nursing home, has not yet had her mental capacity assessment done. She has been making decisions that you personally think are not beneficial for her. Which of the following should not be implemented? Force her to change her mind every time she makes a decision. Explain the benefits of making the right decision. Allow her to make her own decision, as she still has mental capacity. All of the above. Q3. Jim is in persistent pain and has oromorph PRN. All your carers are on their rounds and you are about to administer this drug. What would you do? Dispense 10 milliliters oromorph and administer immediately to relieve pain. Dispense 10 milliliters oromorph and call one of the carers to witness. Call one of the carers to witness dispensing and administering the drug. Administer the drug and ask one of the carers to sign the book after their pad rounds. Q4, John, 26 years old, was admitted to the hospital due to multiple gunshot wounds on his abdomen. On nutritional assessment in the ICU, the patient's height and weight were estimated to be 1.75 m and 75 kg, respectively, with a normal body mass index, BMI, of 24.5 kg per square meter. He was started on parenteral nutrition support on day one post-admission. Postoperatively, the patient developed worsening renal function and required dialysis. In critical care, what would be most likely recommended for him to meet his nutritional need? Starting parenteral nutrition early in patients who are unlikely to tolerate enteral intake within the next three days. Starting with a slightly lower than required energy intake, 25 kcal kilogram. A range of protein requirements, 1.3 to 1.5 g kilogram. All of the above. None of the above. Q5, Tom, 48 years old, has been exhibiting signs and symptoms of anaphylactic reaction. You want to make sure that he is in a comfortable position. Which of the following should you consider? Tom should be sat up if he is experiencing airway and breathing problems. Tom should be lying on his back if he is assessed to be breathing and unconscious. Tom should be sat up if his blood pressure is too low. Tom should be encouraged to stand up if he feels faint. Q6. The following are ways to remove factors that trigger anaphylactic reaction except for one. It is not recommended to make the patient should not be forced to vomit after food-induced anaphylaxis. Definitive treatment should not be delayed if removing a trigger is not feasible. Any drug suspected of causing an anaphylactic reaction should be stopped. After a bee sting, do not touch the stinger for about a maximum of three hours. Q7. There has been an outbreak of the norovirus in your clinical area. Majority of your staff have rang in sick. Which of the following is incorrect? Do not allow visitors to come in until after 48 hours of the last episode. Tally the episodes of diarrhea and vomiting. Staff who has the virus can only report to work 48H after last episode.
Ask one of the staff who is off sick to do an afternoon shift on same day. Q8. Mrs. Z has been very chesty the last few days. She has been having difficulty with breathing. You have referred her to the GP and requested for a home visit. What would probably be prescribed by the GP? Stelevo 200. Digoxin 40 mg. Trimethoprim 100 mg. Simvastatin 100 mg. Q9. A complaint has been raised by one of the service user's relatives. Which of the following should you not document? The person's name. The date and time of complaint made. The complaint itself. The person's country of origin. Q10. You were a new nurse in a geriatric ward. The son of one of your patients discussed that he has noticed his mother is not being treated well in the ward and that she looks very dehydrated and malnourished. How do you deal with the scenario? Do not do anything, because it is not much of a concern. Discuss the case with a colleague. Report this to your supervisor. Make a decision not to intervene, it will be dealt with by management. Q11. Mr. James has been having type 6 and 7 stools today. As you are doing his medications, which of the following would you not omit? Docusate sodium 2 capsules. Lactulose 5 ml. Senna 10 ml. Simvastation 100 mg. Q12. One of the following is not true about a delegation responsibility of a medication registrant. Nurses are accountable to ensure that the patient, carer, or care assistant is competent to carry out the task. Nurses can delegate medication administration to student nurses, nurses on supervision. Nurses can delegate medication administration to unregistered practitioners to assist in ingestion or application of the medicinal product. All of the above. Q13. One of your residents in the nursing home has requested for a glass of whiskey before she goes to bed. What would you do? Refuse to give it, ignore the request. Explain that the whiskey will cause her harm. Give her a shot of whiskey, as requested. Give her a glass of apple juice and tell her it is whiskey. Q14. Which of the following is not a criteria for anaphylactic reaction, sudden onset and rapid progression of symptoms? Life-threatening airway and or breathing and or circulation problems. Skin and or mucosal changes, flushing, urticarial and angioedema. Skin and mucosal changes only. A and B only. All of the above. A, B and C, Q15. Mr. Z called for your assistance and wanted you to sit with him for a bit. He has disclosed confidential information about his personal life. Which of the following should you urgently deal with? History of gallstones. Presence of pacemaker. Suicidal connotations. Loss of appetite due to depression. Q16. The following are ways to assess a patient's fluid and electrolyte status except pulse, blood pressure, capillary refill and jugular venous pressure. Presence of pulmonary or peripheral edema. Presence of postural hypertension. Biomarkers. Q17. Population groups at higher risk of having a low vitamin D status include the following except. People who have darker skin. People who have high exposure to the sun. People who have low exposure with the sun. People who cover their skin for cultural reasons. Q18. MIA is on cephalexin QID. 
You were working on a night shift and have noticed that the previous nurse has not signed for the last two doses. What should you do? Document the incident and speak to your manager. Check the rotor, find out when he is back and leave a note on the Mars for him to sign. Find out what the whistle-blowing policy is about. Ask the qualified nurse to sign it on handover if it has definitely been administered. Q19. You were on a night shift in a ward and has been allocated to dispose controlled medications. Which of the following is correct? Controlled drugs destruction and pharmacy stock check should be done at different times. Controlled drugs should be destroyed with the use of the denaturing kit. Excessive quantities of controlled drugs can be stored in the cupboard whilst awaiting for destruction. None of the above. Q20. Mrs. A is 90 years old and has been admitted to the nursing home. The staff seem to have difficulty dealing with her family. One day, during your shift, Mrs. A fell off a chair. You have assessed her, and no injuries have been noted. Which of the following is a principle of the duty of candor? You will not ring the family since there is no injury caused by the fall. You have liaised with the lead nurse, and she decided not to ring the family due to no harm. Observe the patient, take her physical observations, and ask if you must call the family. All of the above. None of the above. Q21. You were assigned to change the dressing of a patient with diabetic foot ulcer. You were not sure if the wound has sloughy tissues or pus. How will you carry out your assessment? Sloughy tissue is a mass of dead tissues in your wound bed, while pus is a thick yellowish, greenish opaque liquid produced in an infected wound. Sloughy tissues are exactly the same as pus, and they both have a yellowish tinge. Sloughy tissues and pus are similar to each other. Both are found on the wound bed tissue and indicative of a dying tissue. The presence of sloughy tissues and pus are an indication of non-surgical debridement. All of the above. None of the above. Q22. An adult patient with nasogastric tube died in a medical ward due to aspiration of fluids. Staff nurse on duty believes that she has flushed the tube and believed it is patent. What should not have been done? Nothing should be introduced down the tube before gastric placement is confirmed. Internal guide wires should not be lubricated before gastric placement is confirmed. Auscultate the patient's stomach as you push some air in, and if you cannot hear anything, flush it. It is important to check the position of the tube by measuring the pH value of stomach contents. Q23. Mrs. X is diabetic and on PEG feed. Her blood sugar has been high during the last three days. She is on Nystatin Oral Drops QID, regular PEG flushes and insulin doses. Her humulin dose has been increased from 12 IU to 14 IU. The nurse practitioner has advised you to monitor her BMs for the next two days. What will be your initial intervention if her BM drops to 2.8 mole after two morning doses of 14 IU? Offer her a chocolate bar and a glass of orange juice. Flush glucose syrup through her PEG tube. Ring the nurse practitioner and ask if the insulin dose can be dropped to 12 IU. Contact the general practitioner and request for a visit. Q24, a patient in one of your bays has called for staff. She needed assistance with spending a penny. What will you do? Ask her if she wants a hot or cold drink and give her one as requested. Assist her to walk to the vending machine and let her choose what she wants to buy. 
assist her to walk to the toilet, and provide her with some privacy. Help her find her purse, and ask her what time she will be ready to go out. Q25, Evelyn, 57 years old, suffered from a very dense left-sided cerebrovascular accident eye stroke. She was unconscious and unresponsive for several days with four fluids for hydration. Since her recovery from stroke, she has been prescribed to commence enteral feeding through a fine-bore nasogastric tube, in which she signed her consent in front of her who have always been supportive of her decisions. However, she tends to pull out her NGT when she is by herself in her room. She died of malnutrition after a few days. Which of the following statements is true? Nurses should have the empathy to listen to more than just the spoken word. Nurses should practice in accordance to Evelyn's best interest while providing support to the family and listening to their concerns and wishes. Evelyn needs to be supported with questions related to mortality and meaning of life. Therapeutic communication is also essential. All of the above. Q26, what are the six physiological parameters incorporated into the national early warning scores? Respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, temperature, systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and level of consciousness. Biomarkers, oxygen saturation, temperature, systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and level of consciousness. Oxygen saturation, temperature, systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, level of consciousness and edema. Temperature, systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, level of consciousness, edema and pupillary reaction. All of the above. Q27. The Mars says that Benedict is on TID macrogol. You have noticed that the nurses have been writing a for refused. What do you do? Write a on the Mars because Benedict is expected to refuse it. Offer the macro goal and write a if the patient refuses it. Check bowel charts and cancel macro goal on Mars if bowels are fine. Change the prescription to PRN. Q28. Which of the following sets of needs should be included in your service user's person-centered care plan? Social, spiritual and academic needs. Medical, psychological and financial needs. Physical, medical, social, psychological and spiritual needs. A and B only. All of the above. Q29. Which of the following is the most important in infection control and prevention? Wearing gloves and apron at all times. Hand washing. Immediate prescription of antibiotics. Use of hand rubs in the bedside. Q30. You were on duty, and you have noticed that the syringe driver is not working properly. What should you do? Ask someone to fix it. Report this to your supervisor immediately. Leave this for the senior staff to sort out. Recommend a person to repair it. Q31. You were assisting Mrs. X with personal care and hygiene. She has been assessed to have mental capacity. In her wardrobe, you have seen a dress that is quite difficult to wear and a pair of trousers which is quite easy to put on. You are trying to make a decision which one to put on her. Which of the following is a person-centered intervention? Ask her what she prefers, show her the clothes and let her choose. Let Mrs. X wear her trousers. Explain to her that the dress is so difficult to put on. Tell her that the trousers will make her more comfortable if she chooses it. Q32. Charlotte has been very physically and verbally aggressive towards other patients and staff for the last few weeks. 
she is now on one-to-one -one care, 24 hours a day. According to her person-centered care plan, the nurses are looking after her very well preventing her from causing any harm. Behavior has been discussed with the social worker, and clinical lead has applied for do LS. Which of the following is correct? Do LS will allow staff to intervene depriving Charlotte from doing something to hurt herself, other residents and staff. Do LS refers to protecting the other patients only from Charlotte's destructive behavior. Do LS protects the nurses and doctors only when providing care for Charlotte. Do LS protects Charlotte only from committing suicide. Q33. Charlotte has ran out of Cavillon cream. You have noted that her groins are very red and sore. You can see that John has spare Cavillon tubes after checking the stocks. What will you do? Borrow a tube from John's stock as Charlotte's groins are red and sore. Use Cane's 10 for now and apply Cavillon once stock has arrived. Request for a repeat prescription from the GP and have the stock delivered by the chemist. Ring the GP and ask him to see Charlotte's groins, then prescribe Cavillon. Q34, Christine cannot get herself a drink because of her disability. Her carers only give her drinks three times a day, so she does not wet herself. What type of abuse is this? Physical abuse. Institutional abuse. Neglect. Sexual abuse. Q35. You were running a shift and a pack of controlled drugs were delivered by the chemist pharmacist whilst you were giving the morning medications. What would you do first? Keep the controlled drugs in the trolley first, then store it after you have done morning drugs. Count the controlled drugs, store them in controlled drug cabinet and record them on the controlled drug book. Count the controlled drugs, store them in the medication trolley and record them on the controlled drug book. Record them in the controlled drug book and delegate one of the carers to store them in the controlled drug cabinet. Q36 Mrs. X was taken to the accident and emergency unit due to anaphylactic shock. The treatment for Mrs. X will depend on the following except location, number of responders, equipment and drugs available, triage system in the AE. Q37 documentation confirms that Amy has MISA. You walked into her bedroom with coffee and biscuits on a tray. Which of the following is incorrect? Put the coffee and biscuits on her bedside table and leave the tray on the other table. Wash your hands thoroughly before leaving her room. Dispose your gloves and apron before washing your hands. Use the alcohol gel on Amy's bedside before leaving her room. Q38, you are currently working in a nursing home. One of the service users is struggling to swallow or chew his food. To whom do you make a referral to? Tissue viability nurse. Social worker. Speech and language therapist. Care manager. Q39, Jones appears to be very confused today. He seems to be quite verbally aggressive towards staff. His urine has also got a bit of foul smell. How would you assess this resident? Check his papillary response to light. Collect a urine sample for MSU. Carry out the urine dipstick. B and C, none of the above. Q40, Kate, 50 years old was admitted to the hospital with gastrointestinal bleed presumed to be esophageal varices. It has been recommended that she needs to be transfused with blood, however, due to her religious and personal beliefs, 
she needed volume expanding agents. Unfortunately, she died a few hours after admission. Before dying, she said that it was God's will, which she believed was right. Which of the following statements is false? Health professionals should be aware of imposing one's world view upon others and strive to be more receptive and sensitive to the needs of others. Individual choice, consent and the right to refuse treatment is important. It is important for all health professionals to do any means to keep a patient alive regardless of traditions and beliefs. None of the above. Q41 Mrs. X is 89 years old and very frail. She has renal impairment and history of myocardial infarction. She needs support from staff to meet her nutritional needs. Which four fluids are recommended for Mrs. X? Consider prescribing less fluid. Consider prescribing more fluid. Either of the above. None of the above. Q42, Olivia is 86 years old and has been in the nursing home for five years now. She has been complaining of burning sensation in her chest and sour taste at the back of her throat. What would she most likely to be prescribed with? Ranitidine, Zantac, Paracetamol, Levothyroxine, a and B, B and D, Q43, James has not been able to communicate with the nurses on duty. Using nonverbal communication and gestures to help one identify a service user's needs is important because, the ability to communicate may be affected by illness. It saves time and makes one more efficient. The service user may be distracted and might not enjoy talking to staff. All of the above. Q44, an 82-year-old lady was admitted to the hospital for assessment of her respiratory problems. She has been a long-term smoker in spite of her daughter advising her to stop. Based on your assessment, she has lost a substantial amount of weight. How will you assess her nutritional status? Check her height and weight, so you can determine her BMI, BMI score and nutritional care plan. Use the respiratory and perfusion assessment chart on admission. Check if she is struggling to chew and swallow, and make a referral to the speech and language therapist. All of the above. Q45. Betty has been assessed to be very confused and with impaired mobility. She wants to go to the dining room for her meal, but she wants a cardigan before doing so. What will you do? Give her wet wipes for her hands before dinner. Disregard the cardigan and take her to the dining room. Ask her what she means by a cardigan. Make her comfortable in a wheelchair and cover her legs with a blanket. Q46, you are working in a nursing home, morning shift, and one of your residents is still in the hospital. Nothing has been documented since admission. What would you do? Ring the family and find out what happened to the resident. Speak to your manager and tell her about it. Ring the ward and request for an update from the nurse on duty. Document that the resident is still in the hospital. Q47, Sophia has been prescribed with estradiol tablet to be inserted twice a week at night. You entered her bedroom and noticed she is fast asleep. What would you do? Try to gently wake her up and insert her vaginal tablets. Allow her to get some sleep and try to insert the vaginal tablet on your next turn rounds. Speak to her and ask her to spread her legs so you can insert her vaginal tablet. Document that the tablet cannot be administered at all because the patient has refused.